Hello everyone and welcome to this month's edition of Blue Beam Me Up. Blue Beam Me Up is a series of webinars that are run by Browser Graphics in the UK, uh, who were the original uh, Blue Beam partner for the UK and Ireland. And now, uh, 20 years later, we are now the largest in Europe. And over the past few months, we've been running these webinars to give everybody a, a flavour of what can be achieved with Bluebeam under the hand and guidance of an expert user. The expert user this month is uh, someone that you would be familiar with if you've attended previous webinars. It's my colleague Troy De Groot. Uh, Troy, if uh, you're familiar with him in the Bluebeam world, he is the, one of the leading instructors. And uh, over the past few months, he's been uh, sharing some of his tips, tricks, and product efficiency tools to help you get the most out of the software. This month, we're focusing on a core function of Bluebeam Review, which is the measurement tools. And within the webinar, Toy's going to be sharing some of the tips and tricks that he's been using over the past few years to get the most out of the software. And at this point, I'm going to hand you over to Troy the Grid, and uh, he'll take you through his webinar. Good afternoon, Blue Beamers. My name is Troy the Groot with U Chapter 2, and I'm excited to partner with the team at Brighton Graphics to deliver world-class Bluebeam training and customization services, empowering you to get the most out of your Bluebeam investment. Here we are with another monthly webinar. This one is focused on measurements a topic not only for quantity takeoffs, but also collecting accurate information on the construction site. A perfect segue smack between last month's estimating webinar and next month's snagging list presentation. Today, I'll show you different ways to calibrate your drawings, how the basic measurement tools work in Bluebeam Review. Then I'll show a few of the custom settings you can use to account for vertical materials rather than just a horizontal distance of our markups. Area measurements with slope applied, the area measurements of a wall surface and others. And of course, after we show you what's possible, we're always available to follow things up with more in-depth training. So let's dive in. First thing we need to do anytime we do any sort of measuring is calibrate the drawings. So I'm going to go over to my measurement panel here. Looks like a ruler. When I click on that, it opens up the panel. And there's a couple different ways we can calibrate the drawings. First off, we have presets here. You can use this pull down menu to select what scale your drawing is at. If I select 1 equals 30, or if I come down here, Whichever one I select, it's going to set the scale of the entire sheet. So I can set that and go on with my markups. As I probably mentioned in past webinars, I will teach all of my students every time to never do it that way. We don't know if the drawings were printed correctly. There's options when you print from CAD software to scale to fit, which means it's going to scale the contents of the PDF to fit on the sheet, whatever sheet you select. So the title of your plan or the scale in your title block might say a certain scale, but when it's stretched to fit on a certain piece of paper, it may no longer be to scale. So I don't trust those. If I have a scanned document, uh, I don't trust it at all. So I will always come up here and use the calibrate button it's easy enough when you click on that. It's going to open up this little uh, window here telling us to select two points of a known dimension. So I'm going to say OK. And I'm going to zoom in somewhere where I know a dimension. Here I've got 30 feet from building grid to building grid. And with my snaps turned on down here, snap to content, I'm going to snap to those grid lines. I like to hold my shift key to draw a straight line over to the next grid and I click there and then this window pops up and it's telling us this random distance on the piece of paper equals 50 feet and I know that's not true so I'm going to come in here and change it to what the dimension says 30 feet and I'm going to say apply scale. Now all of the drawings that we do are going to be to that scale. Okay. 
So those are the ways that you can calibrate your drawings. While we're talking about calibration, I want to jump into a different type of drawing and show you how we can calibrate different scales on the same sheet. We're also going to work with uh, what they call profile drawings. So here I've got a plan of a road layout and then down below I have a profile uh, cut through somewhere in that plan. So to start out, I'm going to calibrate the whole sheet according to the plan view up here. So I'm going to come over here again, hit calibrate, select two points of a known dimension. And this time I'm going to zoom in on the bar scale on the drawing. And I'm going to snap to that line work. There and there. And I'm going to update this to be 40 feet. Because that's what my bar scale says. I'm going to apply scale. And now everything on that drawing is to that scale. But down here, you'll notice that we have a different XY scale for the profile. This is 100 feet from this benchmark to this one, and only 2 feet between these lines. So I'm going to calibrate that separately. And to do that, I need to create a viewport. So again, over on my measurement panel over here, I'm going to click on the plus. It asks me to select a region to define a viewport. So I'm going to draw a box around my profile. And I'm going to label, I'm going to give it a name and call this um, profile viewport. And for this one, again, I could select presets, but I'm going to click on custom and go ahead and calibrate. It's going to tell me to select two points. So I'm going to come down here again, snapping to those benchmarks and entering in 100 feet. Next, because the Y direction is a different scale, I'm going to click on this box and it's going to give me another calibrate button. Select two points again. So I'm going to click here. I'm going to hold my shift key and click up here. And this time I'm going to tell it that's two feet. And apply my scale. So now this blue box is telling me that I have a viewport. It's showing up over here in my viewport menu. And the inside of that window is calibrated separate from the rest of the sheet. So you can go in here and do your area measurements. It's going to calculate according to those different scales. It'll do the formulas for you and give you those accurate measurements. Okay. So I just wanted to quickly jump onto a different type of drawing and show you how those work. I'm going to close that out. Next, I want to go through... Um, I like to get all of my measurements up here. There are other places where they're located. You can see in this particular profile, I've got all my measurement tools across the top in a toolbar. Under tools, measure, you also have all of your measurement tools. I personally like to get them off of the top of our measurement panel because I'm always looking at the different properties inside of that measurement panel. And I'll show you why. When we look at a few of these, I'm just going to click across here and show you some of those properties. When I go to my length tool with this one, I can add a pitch. If I click on that pull down, I can use the pitch degree or grade. And I just enter in if this is a 412 pitch, I can put that in, draw out my measurement. And it's going to label it with that pitch and give me a new length for that measurement. If I remove that hatch, or sorry, if I remove that pitch, so right now it's 13 foot 10. If I change this to zero, you'll see it's 13 foot 1. So it does the math and gives us the new length of that. 
Going on to the next one, the poly length tool. This one gives us a rise drop. So the example I use on this one is wiring, cable, uh, ductwork, piping, things like that, where we have horizontal runs, but we also have verticals. Um, so when a wire runs through a ceiling, we'll need a drop on each end to get down to the outlet or down to the switch or something like that. So we can very easily add all of the vertical together along that line. And it will label that for us. When we come in here, it says rise drop 16 feet, and it gives us a new total adding the horizontal and that vertical drop. So we can account for that kind of unseen quantity that dropped down into the sheet. We keep going across, we have the area. With the area, we can also add a pitch, same as the other one, pitch degree or grade. You've got slabs that are sloped or uh, a roof or different things like that you can put the pitch degree or grade in there and it will give you the new area including that slope the volume tool over here of course to get any volume we need to add a depth so you need to tell it how deep when you draw that when you use this tool you're drawing the area and you need to set the depth of that area. So if this is, uh, let's say, 0.5 meters deep, then I can draw out my footing. And then with any of these, I want to make sure that the output is what I want it to be. So in this particular one, um, we might want this to be metric. So I'm going to change this over two cubic meters and it's going to convert all that same with all of these if we change all of these uh, instead of feet and inches we can change those to meters it'll update those here okay so that's how we can get that volume and then the count tool uh, this one is just going to give us a generic check mark to count things if you go to properties before you lay those down you can change the colors maybe you want a diamond shape you can do that as well so you can set different variables for those um, so that's looking at some of the settings within that measurement panel and let's take those and start looking at some examples on actual takeoff tools that I've built as examples in our estimating basics. And then we'll start to look at some more advanced things as well today, and introduce you to some of those. So to start out, um, you're going to see that I've measured quite a few of these rooms. I put wood flooring here, carpet type one in these rooms, uh, carpet type four, one, and so on. I've gone through all of these. This one seems to have moved. We'll click that back in here. I'll nudge it with my arrow on my keyboard. There we go. I also have some blue dash lines that represent some Cat6 cable. I've counted several doors. I've counted toilets and sinks in here and then up here i did a little um, landscaping figure feature i'll show you that once we get there but let's take a look at the quantities that are all adding up all i did with these is use the proper tools and color in where those materials are going to be laying and if we look at our markups list here you can see that it categorizes all of those and sorts them for me. So here's all the instances of carpet type number one. It gives me the square meters of each one and my total square meters for that carpet type. Same thing with carpet two, carpet three, carpet four. 
Then we get into this CAT6 cable. This is our total length of that material in here for each one of those runs. And then it adds up to the total length uh, for the project. Keep scrolling down. I've got 19 doors. And then I've got my um, landscaping feature. I've got paper patio, stones, uh, retaining walls, crushed rock, some shingles. Uh, I've got a roof on top of that. And then you're going to see those sinks and toilets I have within the building. A slab on grade up in that landscaping figure feature and then the wood flooring throughout the inside of that building. So all of those quantities are adding up for me in my markups list. Okay, so let's take a look at how I did those. I've got over here in my tool chest, several tools that I've built uh, over the course of our Estimating Basics course, teaching that uh, we actually show you how to build out your tool chest with materials that you're measuring every day. So um, some other ones we might be using are this um, six inch wood wall. And so I have it labeled exterior, but we're going to ignore that for a second. And I can come in here and basically trace all of my interior walls. And it'll highlight it for me, indicating that I've taken that off. And so on. And I keep running through that process through all my walls. And you can see that those totals are popping up over here for my linear footage of wall. And then there's some things that we teach in the Estimating Advanced where we'll actually create an assembly for the wall where that simple markup will not only give us um, the linear footage, uh, you know, how many boards we need for treated base, a double top plate, um, studs at different spacings, uh, the insulation, the anchor bolts, the sheathing, the jip board, all of that can be figured out on one markup if we want to. Uh, and then here I can right click, convert that to an arc, get a little bit better there. So that's how um, those tools are laid out over here to show you how I built out this uh, landscaping feature. I'll just do some of the same tools and run through it again. So I'm going to go ahead and do a rock island. Select that. And let's just draw some sort of shape. Double click when I'm done. And that gives me all my rock. But then some of that is going to be paper and concrete. So I'm going to go into my measurement panel. Underneath the area tool, I'm going to do a polygon cutout and basically follow this shape so that I have, I don't know, a even spacing of uh, rock all the way around my slab. I'm gonna cut that out. Then I'm gonna go grab my tool for my concrete slab. Over here, my slab on grade. Click inside of there and it will place that in my markup or inside of that uh, cutout. Okay, so I'm gonna delete that because I need to move this text first. Put that up here and grab my slab, drop it in here. I'll move that text as well where I know it'll be clean. And then let's go ahead and add, I'm going to cut out another area where the pavers are going to be. So I have a concrete edging around the whole paver. Do 
Got it cut out. Just kind of make it look the same. And then grab my paver. Drop that in there. And then on this one, I put a retaining wall. So let's grab our retaining wall. And maybe we want a retaining wall on three, two sides. Just draw that in there. What's nice about these tools is the customer can start to visualize what that's going to look like. And meanwhile, all of our quantities are being added up down here. If the customer wants to add another section of retaining wall or make this smaller, we just adjust what it looks like for them and it's adjusting our quantities as well. So that's how I laid out this whole paver area. And then I put a roof over top of it. So let's go ahead and I'm just going to drop over top of this area, overhanging the rock and the concrete. And you can see this one is labeled with the um, shingles. It's marked with an 812 pitch. I built that into the tool. And it's giving us all those quantities down here. So lots of cool stuff that you can do with custom workups. If you're measuring the same materials over and over again, uh, you'll, you'll save a ton of time building out your custom tools and, uh, you know, not having to worry about labeling them or taking down notes on a notepad next to you on your quantities and adding them up separately. Uh, all we need to do is really color in the lines and trace around the walls and, and all of our quantities pop up down here. Okay. So some more advanced things that I did to show you here as well is I started building custom columns. So, uh, well, let me show the, show you the markups I did first. Um, I showed you all of the different floor types, but then this here, this blue dash line is my cat six cable for my TVs. So I've got a screen in each meeting room and that cable is going to run through a cable tray over to my server room. And that's what all of these different runs are. And then it's giving me all of those totals down here per run and then total. And what I've done here is on different cable trays, I've put in different distances for the hanger spacing. So um, I've got every, I had this set to feet originally. I, so this is every 10, every six and a half, so on and so forth. And then I built, so you enter in that one manually. And then this next one, the total hanger count, is going to take the length divided by the spacing plus one for the starter hanger and give us the number of hangers that we need for that run. And so on. It's going to go through all these and tell us how many hangers. And then we have a total up here for how many hangers we need. Next example is our retaining wall. So I've got a wall here. If I click on it, it brings us there. I've got another one on this new example. But here you can see I built out a choice where for the bl uh, block size, I can put in eight inch or 12 inch. And what that's doing is it's taking the surface area of this wall which I set up to be, now this is obviously the length of the wall, but I set up the average height to be three feet. So it might be four feet in the corner and it goes down to zero. 
but it's three feet average on that whole area. And then it will give me the surface area of the face of that wall. And then I put in uh, values for each block, depending on the size. And this will tell me how many blocks I need. So I set this all up in Imperial, so it's not giving me accurate um, numbers now, but um, you get the idea. You can build in these choices with values and then build those into formulas to give you uh, different quantities. I like to build out my estimating tools to actually get to the, the, the way that I purchase those materials. So if, if these blocks come in a pallet of a hundred blocks, then I want to figure out how many pallets I need. Oh, that's more important to me and rounding up to that next pallet full instead of just uh, the number of blocks. So I think about that and build my, you know, reverse engineer my tools to get me there. And then also in our advanced class, I show you how to make in these custom columns. Uh, in this case, uh, we've done our estimate and I created a custom column uh, called material ordered. So once I order this material, I can go and check these off, indicating that I've ordered those. And then I can filter my list and tell it to show me only the ones that haven't been ordered so that I know where I'm at. And once I order these, my list is going to get shorter and shorter. And you'll notice when they're filtered out that they're grayed out up here. They don't show up in full color anymore. So I'm going to go and keep every time I order those, I'm going to check this off and my list is getting shorter and shorter as I go. The next thing I might do when I set this up and I order, um, Let's say I order carpet one, I order all those together. I might come over here and put in estimated delivery date. So this is going to be here on the third and so on and so forth. That way I can start to track what's going to show up when out of all of my materials. So that's what I have for you today. Short and sweet. Just wanted to get more in depth with the measurements and the possibilities of those along with custom tools. I hope you learned a few things that you can apply to your work yet this afternoon. Uh, all these examples are part of our estimating basics and estimating advanced courses. Uh, if you have any questions regarding training or customization services for your company, don't hesitate to reach out to the team at Brighter Graphics or myself. And we'd be happy to help you out with that. Thanks for hanging out again this afternoon. I'll turn things back over to Darren and Sean, and we'll see you next month. Hey, great guys. Thank you very much. Um, so we um, got to the end of another webinar and uh, just um, want to go into any questions and answers. Um, we've got a question um, that's uh, asking about what tool are you using to mark up the block work? Um, so I will take that away. Uh, I'm not familiar with what tool was used there. Uh, unfortunately, Troy's had to quickly jump off the call, uh, but I will come back and address that question later on. Um, as Troy mentioned, um, obviously we, we do offer training. So it's one of those things, if you would like to dive uh, further into um, the software and uh, pick, up, pick up some of the the points that were raised within this course or any previous webinars, then feel free to reach out to us and we can uh, have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with you. At this point, um, I'll uh, highlight some of the support and resources that we've got available. Um, a lot of you are now following us on uh, YouTube. Um, you'll find hundreds of little uh, snippets and videos which uh, go, go into uh, a deeper detail uh, within the Bluebeam software. Uh, so feel free to, to join us on the YouTube channel. Uh, again, um, thank you very much for attending the webinars. We've had uh, um, a really popular um, series of events now over the last 14 months where 
almost uh, over a thousand people have attended the webinars and uh, a lot of people come back uh, to to view them online uh, at their own pace so this webinar today will be uploaded onto the website tomorrow so if you feel like you need to dive back into it and uh, pause and watch it at your own pace because there was a lot of stuff covered uh, feel free to come back to the website and watch it tomorrow you also got access to all the previous webinars that we've run over the past few months um, just a final point now um, we will be diving into snagging lists so uh, using bluebeam review so collecting data out on site and then uh, taking that data and uh, progress tracking using bluebeam review and now that can be done so at this point, I'd uh, like to say thank you uh, to everybody that attended. And uh, once again, hopefully see you next month.